So uh, I just, I love to come to all of these. So I am so excited for the spring semester <laughs> um, art talks. And Nathan Williams, uh, who is one of my colleagues on my team with the College of Fine Arts Student Affairs team. Um, okay, okay. Um, so he has been uh, a great asset to the LLP in recruiting all of you all to join our program. And we're really excited to hear from him. And you are actually our first art talk for the semester. So you win a badge. We'll have to get you a badge later. Uh, but thank you for taking your time at seven o'clock on a Tuesday uh, evening to talk with us. So uh, without further ado, we'll have Anna take it away as the lovely co-host. Yes. Okay, yeah. so first, just to introduce yourself for everyone after that lovely introduction Emily gave, could you tell us a little bit about like your name, your title? I mean, I guess you work for UK in Lexington, but just a little bit about what you do. So I'm looking around and I have interacted, I believe, with most of you all in one way or another, whether it was recruiting or interview for specific positions. Um, but for those who don't know, I'm Nathan, Nathan Williams. Um, my official title is Recruiter and Alumni Affairs Officer for the College of Fine Arts. Obviously got to represent. Uh, you've probably seen me around the LOP because as of August, I'm now in that little office, little corner where the peer mentors were and it was storage. So I'm in that office by the dance studio. So if you see a guy who's not a student, that's me. And if you ever need a, a space to lay out, there's a few comfy chairs out there just for you all. So make sure you use them. Um, my name, role. Um, I'm actually coming up on two years with this position um, in two weeks. So I came in halfway through the school year, not really expecting to ever be in higher ed. Um, so to start off my background, I'm a musician. I play French horn and actually came to UK for music performance and arts administration. Uh, my first year was 2011. And I went through the four years, did grad school for arts administration, and actually worked for the Lexington Philharmonic for two years. And I did all their operations and logistics, legal stuff, um, union contracts, artist liaison, all the behind the scenes work that people don't really see. And so I did that for uh, just a little over two years. And I saw this position open up just because I was friends with the, my predecessor and applied for it. And here we are two years later, and I love it every day, especially when I get to hang out with students. So I'm sure I'll go into more detail about all of that later, but yeah, that's me. Yeah. So um, that's cool that you're doing that right now, but you said you definitely didn't see yourself there originally, but going way back as a child, what was your dream job? I wanted to be a vet, a veterinarian. Um, Two reasons that did not go through though. One, I shadowed my local vet, as you should, internships, practicums, shadowing, um, but also this was in sixth or seventh grade. So I, I shadowed my vet one of those summers and maybe grosses you out, but the entire day, all he did was spay and neuter animals. I was like, I don't wanna do this every day of my life. I wanna hang out and cuddle with animals. <laughs> so that was the first reason I didn't wanna become a vet after that. The second one, I had um, a summer job at the Louisville Zoo, which is where I'm from, um, the following summer. And I worked in the bird area, bird um, district or whatever it's called. And I got to feed the penguins, which was really cool. But in order for penguins to get the nutrients, just like humans, they got to use vitamins and multivitamins, but they're not going to eat their pills. They don't have gummy ver versions of their pills. And so I actually had to take frozen little fish bend their heads and put pills in their gills and throw them to the penguins. That was the second reason I didn't want to become a vet. I was like, this is gross. I came home every day reeking of bird and fish and zoo, loved it. Um, but then the science, that was also the other reason. I'm a math person, not a science person. And so once my mom said, you're gonna have to go to school for six, eight, 10 years after high school, I'm like, nope. <laughs> 
So yeah, I wanted to be a vet until I started getting really involved in music at my church. Um, little background, I picked up cello was the first instrument. So cello was second grade. And then I picked up piano in third grade because my brother picked up piano and I got jealous. So I was like, mom, I want to play piano. And then I continued cello, piano, and then fifth grade, like every fifth grader, there's the band and orchestra. And so I picked up trumpet because my dad had trumpet and that's where my parents met in band. So I went to school, did those three instruments, but then the band director quickly realized how much music I had in my background and in my family. And she was like, do you have a French horn by any chance or know anyone who does? Because you had this background of music and I think you could learn it really well. Ironically enough, my aunt played French horn in college. And so I called her up, went up to Cincinnati, grabbed the horn. And then once I got to middle school, mom said, all right, pick two instruments. This is getting really expensive. <laughs> um, and so I picked piano and French horn and then stuck with those all the way through high school. I tried to quit piano every year on almost pretty to be honest, but my piano teacher said, no, stick with it. It'll help. It'll help. I promise. Ended up sticking with it and bypassing all of piano proficiency, thankfully here at UK uh, because of it. And then I did French horn for all six years when I was here and did the orchestra for all six years. I marched for three and I did wind symphony for four years. Wow. You seem like you're super involved in all the music and I wish that my piano teacher had not let me quit piano because I had to take the piano proficiency and that was a headache. <laughs> I always tell people don't quit piano. If you can take lessons, do it. Yeah, some good advice. So you, you have told us a little bit about this or like a medium amount, but um, if there's anything that you have left out, what is kind of your background and educational experience if there's something you haven't told us yet? Like personal education or? just whatever you want to do <laughs> well currently i'm actually taking advantage of the uk employee benefit and taking um, classes in the martin school of public administration uh doing nonprofit administration so this is my first semester back it's just a two semester program so i'm taking um finance for nonprofit and just find um just nonprofit management <laughs> is the other class um, which is honestly really weird because how many arts and men people do we have? Okay, Emily, cool, Hannah. Um, <laughs> anyways, arts administration, all the classes end in for the arts. It's like law for the arts, finance for the arts. I need to get out of that mindset because I did that for six years and all these classes are nonprofit for the government sector, for the healthcare sector. And it's it's a weird transition, but it's really cool just to go from really art specific. How do you bring in patrons? How do you talk to donors? How do you attract artists and collaborate to how do you fulfill a social norm within today's society um, outside of the arts, generally speaking? So that's what I'm currently tackling just to add structure back to the life after during COVID. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what I do without the classes and stuff I'm taking. It's it's good to keep on it. It sounds really interesting that you're learning. Yeah, it's been nice. Although we're only, as you all know, three weeks in. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So what does a day like typically look for you, look like for you as a recruiter and all the things that you do? So really, as most of you all know, it's really just hanging out with incoming students, prospective students. That's really 90% of what I do. Um, Obviously nowadays it's more phone calls and emails and just sending students information uh, via email. Um, I'm actually not doing that many virtual visits, which I was surprised um, when we started offering that opportunity for students. Um, on our website, we pushed, hang out with the ambassadors, hang out with the recruiter, get to know the LLP. And actually not a lot of people took advantage of that. They're still coming to campus, not as often, um, but you probably see me walking through um, the visual art building, music, LLP, probably once or twice a day with students. But really right now, um, during COVID, it's more reevaluating the college-wide recruitment process. So what are the goals of each unit? 
what does arts administration want to do? What are their, their targets? Do they want to get students from out of state? Are they really interested in um, getting students with high ACTs? Do they want to do more um, diverse students with unique backgrounds? And same thing for the other units, like what are their goals? Because it really was before my position was a thing five, six years ago, the units did it did all the recruitment, but then they handed it off to the recruiter dash LLP coordinator, and then they'll split up and Emily and I are here now. Um, and so now that the unit heads have a little more time on their hands, they're getting more involved in the recruitment process to just uh, see what we're up to and what the first year experience is like and really what attracts students like you to UK and Lexington. So right now it's really just re-evaluating the recruitment process, since right now it's sort of just an autopilot, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, there's something good that's probably a great idea to like get done now that you don't have as many students coming to campus. Yeah. So I'm so bad at transitions between questions, but I'm trying. <laughs> what is one piece of advice you would give to a young artist or student from your past life experiences? Network, network, network as much as you can. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you all are shaking your head. So you probably heard that and you probably will hear that more than once. Um, even if you aren't arts administration, do an internship, do a practicum, do something over the summer. Don't just sit at home and practice or draw or dance. Um, go to those camps, even if it's in Lexington, great. Um, but try to find something that you're unsure about. That was something I actually talked about with a student today. I had a internship that was specifically finance. Um, it was with the Spoleto Festival in Charleston, South Carolina. Gorgeous, I loved it. It's a big month long classical music, art, opera festival, but I did nothing artistic. All I did was Excel spreadsheets, finance, revenue, income. I love numbers, but I don't wanna do that all day, every day of my life. And so that was something I figured out that I did not want to do. And so um, if you have the opportunity to expand your horizon and take classes outside of your discipline, uh, I definitely encourage you to attack it with an uh, open mind and just appreciate the opportunity that one, you're in school. Now's the time to figure out what you don't want to do so you can learn what you do want to do eventually. That's really good advice. And that's something I've heard a lot echoed throughout a lot of these art talks and stuff too, is just try a bunch of things to figure out what you like and what you don't like, because hardly anybody ends up in the place where they thought they would be in these. So for you throughout your career, um, what would you consider to be your most successful career move or moment for you? Honestly, to piggyback off of the networking thing, um, I was an intern for the Gunner School for the Arts in Louisville. That was summer of 2014. Their first year at Center. So they were originally at Transy up until the summer of 2013. Then they went to Center College for two or three years, and now they're here. And so that summer was really great, not just for the networking opportunity, but how to put on such a big program for the first time on a brand new campus that none of us are familiar with. And it was just really cool because I got to intern prior to the program. I wasn't just there for the three weeks or four weeks, technically. I was working at the Kentucky Center for three weeks because I'm from Louisville. So I got to live and work there, intern for the program, and then um, wrap things up the week or two afterwards. So it was literally like a summer long experience. I met people from all over the US and I don't know how many people, you know, went to GSA, but GSA is just one big network opportunity. And everywhere you go, you will literally meet someone who went to GSA or GSP. And that's really, that's what leads to jobs is um, you're like, oh, I collaborated with the student or I collaborated with this, this faculty member and did this project and got to do this portfolio piece. And once you say GSA, people are gonna be like, you went to GSA too? Even though it's just in Louisville or technically now it's here, um, based out of Louisville. It's a huge program, a huge benefit. 
and just a great summer to get a lot of opportunities and put check marks in all the boxes. Yeah, what was the question? Um, <laughs> your most successful career moment. Oh, successful, yeah. I definitely think um, <laughs> even though I had multiple internships, um, I even did one abroad. Um, I think GSA was the most successful of them all, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I haven't met like a single person from GSA or GSP who wasn't like, didn't have a life-changing experience with it. I thought you were about to say you've never met a GSA or GSP person. Oh, no, I went to like, what? That's contradicting <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, it's life-changing. It is. Yeah, I did. I did both. <laughs> um. So now what do... I just read the words wrong. What role does an artist like yourself play in our society, do you think? Definitely in just being an advocate, um, not just in my role as a recruiter, but just as a, I call myself a back burner musician. Um, I have two French horn students who I teach still and I do gigs, did gigs here and there. Um, and it's just really taking the opportunity to still support colleagues support organizations. Not only is it my job to support current students and prospective students, um, but even just as an artist in a artistically driven city like Lexington and Central Kentucky, just support the arts. Um, right now, it's literally impossible not to support the arts. Um, all the artists are doing great things. The fact that the theater department did all those um, black box recordings last semester, that was so cool. I got to make my dinner and I was in my slippers, just eating dinner, watching some theater as uh, as we all would. Um, I definitely miss live performances, don't get me wrong, but um, just being able to see what else is out there. Um, even as a young adult and young professional, I still get to just test the waters and you're literally not losing anything if you experiment and just support the opera program, if you watch their gal galas online or if you um, go to the art museum now you literally it's it's impossible to go down a wrong direction right now with uh, just supporting the arts that's really true and it's like surprised me how much like how inventive UK and like other arts organizations have been with COVID because initially I was like that's it my whole life it's over <laughs> for like the next however long I was I was a little worried, honestly, but then once things started to, to produce um, across all the disciplines, um, even though it was all online, all virtual, we all got the burnout. It was just really cool to see what was becoming of it. And that was really the biggest conversation that I had with all my ambassadors. I said, what do you all miss the most about school? And they said, honestly, collaborating. Um, the classes are cool. Campus is cool, but you're here to grow as artists initially and that was something that they missed the most and once they found ways to do it safely I think in the long run it will definitely benefit the artistic world um, be more accessible by those who can't go to different facilities and drive to New York and go to your backyard for a backyard concert it's just really cool to see that you can offer different options rather than in person <laughs> It, it really is. Yeah. So what encourages or inspires you in your job right now? Honestly, being in the LLP now and hearing you all practice and seeing you all dance, that, that really, that's why I like doing what I do. <laughs> um, and the first time I heard people practicing this semester, I was like, what is that? Oh, that's a student, they're back. And it's just really cool to see students on campus doing what they love. My favorite time of the year is during the summer when marching band comes back and you hear the drum line, even though it's annoying. Um, <laughs> it's just so cool to hear the just these basic, basic drills. Um, I think I really enjoy it because that's really what attracted me to UK in the first place. That was my first time on campus. I, I shadowed someone and went to the marching band rehearsal. Um, but really, if you're on campus and one, you hear the marching band or two, you see Greek life, you're like, all right, we're back on, we're back in the fall. This is it. Um, so really just seeing you all doing what you love. That's, that's what inspires me to recruit the next generation of artists. Yeah. Wow. 
I know it is nice. I feel like every single time I walk through the LLP spaces, if it's not like the middle of the night or even sometimes in the middle of the night, somebody is practicing. Yeah. So that is definitely a perk of living here. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to do next with your job or life? Like what are your current goals? I mean, I guess other than let um, continuing like your education, like you mentioned. Nonprofit just in general is definitely my mindset. That's why I chose the arts administration route. Um, I love business, but being mission driven and just being with a community of some sort is what I love. Um, I don't know how many of you all know, but I love fitness. I love healthy lifestyle. And so um, maybe something down that route someday, but I really don't, I'm not, in an exit route right now, I'm trying to find my way out of <laughs> out of this position. Emily, don't tell David. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, I'm really happy where I am right now, and I'm excited to see the college shape after COVID and see where we go after all of this and how we all benefit from not just current students but prospective students and how many people want to pursue the arts following uh, the pandemic. So it's really. I'm still young um, in my career, and I think really now is the time to not just go back to school, but get your feet wet and continue exploring and be a part of the community. That's really, at the end of the day, if I'm interacting with people and being an advocate for the arts and hanging out with people and um, bringing different opportunities to different societies or group of society, it's, it's a good day. So I zoomed through those questions since we also have the ambassador <laughs> overview, but before we move on to that, does anyone have any questions about anything for him? If you think I do. of questions, you know where my office is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like you said, you are still young. Um, what do you wanna do outside of like CFA, outside of even Kentucky? Like, what do you, who do you want to be when you grow up? Who do I want to be when I grow up? Myself. That's who oh, I want to be. I love that question. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just having a healthy balance, continuing to have a healthy balance between work and life. And I think that's really what, I've appreciated from the new normal is that we're all acknowledging the fact that being at a desk from X to Y is not how we do work. Um, it's how we did work 20 years ago. Um, but with technology, um, like for my position specifically, the only reason I technically have to be on campus is when I give campus tours. Um, rarely are there students who drop in or do I get a call saying, hey, someone's here for visual art. Can you meet with them? And so with that time, and we all work 24 seven because of our phones. <laughs> and so people don't clock in at eight and clock out at five at Emily. <laughs> um, granted, she has a family and kids that occupy her a little bit. But um, with my athletic career, it's nice to just do my things, do my workouts, get some work done, um, relax, cook, eat, explore, travel. Um, I have a new niece as of three months ago, so I get to go to Louisville, see her more often. And my nephew, who's about to turn three, um, he's already turning into a brat, so I get to see him some. So it's just um, just continuing finding a good balance and um, living healthy and being healthy and appreciating um, the time that we really have on this earth. <laughs> That's something I've um, acknowledged and appreciated the last few weeks. Uh, it's just life is sensitive. <laughs> and I don't know if you all watched, there's a football game this weekend and YouTube talked about their, uh, do I have a chat feature on here? Yes. Um, it's called day in the life. It's a new series that they're putting on and I just started watching it um, 
this morning actually and it just goes through the day of a life i think the day was like july 25th 2020 and it literally goes around the world following individuals and it's actually really cool and it's just your life at a certain moment is going to be completely different than someone else's life at the same moment um, what I'm going through is going to be unique to me. What you're going through is going to be unique to you. And it's not fair to take out any grudges on anyone else in this world um, just because you're having a bad day. Um, there's this cook who I follow, Tabitha Brown. Um, <laughs> some of you all know her. Yeah. Um, the thing, the quote that she always ends with is, if you're having a bad day, don't ruin someone else's. <laughs> Let, just figure it out. Um, and so it's just having a good time and appreciating just life as it comes and every opportunity and just being happy and enjoying life and tackling new challenges. I'm a very uh, deadline driven. Yes. Um, I love to challenge myself. So just finding the next limit to push and find what's next. Who knows what it is <laughs> to be determined. I love that answer too. My goodness. Great question. Great answer. That was awesome. Yep. We have another question in the chat. What was your favorite piece that you played when you were in UKSO? Yes. <laughs> um, actually behind me, I love UKSO so much. Those are all the seasons I played for UKSO. Um, I was very fortunate enough to play every semester um, when I was at UK. And then I was principal for um, four of the six years. And so whoever's in orchestra, you know, Maestro loves his big pieces. Um, I could literally go and read every single one of those and say, I love this, this, this. Um, but as a French horn player, obviously the big symphonies. Um, something you all might not know, or Emily, I'm a very emotional person. And I cried so much on the UKSO stage. Um, I think there were three moments when I cried that really stick out to me. One was my last concert ever. Um, we did um, Alexander Nevsky, which is a big Russian spectacular with uh, the choirs and orchestra. Um, I couldn't even finish playing the piece and it's this big finale, just loud, couldn't finish it. Um, Shostakovich five, um, it's a very, it's an emotional piece only because Maestro sent us this documentary talking about the piece and it's all about the wars. And, um, I was thinking of that when I was playing it and there's this really difficult horn solo, which I nailed. Um, <laughs> and so it, they're all always happy tears, but it was just fantastic. And then the third one was um, when I went to Prague Summer Nights, the music festival that Maestro does, uh, what's that opera called? Um, oh, 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 oh. All right, I'll find it, I'll find it. A uh, Swore Angelica. It's, uh, it's a one act opera. And we got to perform it in this really gorgeous cathedral in Prague. Um, the orchestra was on stage. We did it with the um, an opera, but the the chorus, the people who weren't the lead roles, they were in the balcony, literally surrounding the audience in the orchestra. And uh, the big finale. I don't know if you all are familiar with Swore Angelica and the storyline, but uh, a nun commits adultery, and commits suicide and she sees her son that she lost while she goes to heaven, she, he greets her. And I actually had a sister who passed away when I was really young. And so when I was playing that piece in Prague, I, I was playing my horn and I look and the, the nun, the mom started bawling when she saw her son. And so I thought of my sister at that moment and I started a ball and then I look in the audience and Maestro Nardalillo, because another conductor was conducting, he was crying. So first of all, if you know John Nardalillo, if you imagine him crying, you know something's good. <laughs> and so all of us are crying and it was just this huge, just emotional mess. But um, 
yes, UKSO, I just love every moment with it. Um, that's honestly the ensemble that shaped my career and shaped my interest. Um, I was thinking of that answer, actually. Um, I did a practicum with them for the concerto competition. I was like, you know, this is so stupid. I had that mindset. But that practicum led to me managing the orchestra, which led to the GSA um, letter of recommendation, which led to interning for Proxmoor Nights, which led to orchestra management for Lex Phil. And so, like I said, nothing is too small. No opportunity is too, you're never too good for an opportunity. Um, and even though the concerto competition when you look at it, it looks like a tiny operation. There's a lot that goes into it. And so I'm um, really just those six years are really <laughs> my career at UK just shaped up on one wall. Good I guess that's a, a good advantage of playing a string instrument is if I cry, I could still play. <laughs> Gosh, I was so mad. Yeah. <laughs> see any other last minute questions of course i mean i guess you can always ask him questions because <laughs> his emails everywhere and his office is downstairs yeah but before we move on to the ambassador program i guess not colin thank you for sharing you're welcome yeah i'm just emotional musician in general that's how you get the most out of music. It's just like, how do you connect with it the most? Um, never cry during marching band, no. But <laughs> I think in the church choir too, we always had this annual summer um, week long mission trip choir tour that we did. And we always had a senior homecoming the, the day we got back to Louisville. And we sang the same piece every single year. And that was like the piece that everyone knows it's just, I'm going up yonder. I don't know if y'all are familiar with it, but all of the alumni from the choir would come up and sing. And it would be alumni of one year, two years, 10 years. And we, we were doing it actually in Cincinnati where my sister is. And so I started bawling there and my brother was there too. And I look at him and he's bawling. And so it's just, music's great, y'all. <laughs> I just love just the emotion that comes with music and the stories that come with it all. Um, so if you're ever disconnected by a piece or you don't like it, um, figure out just the history that really shapes not just music, art. Like why did someone create a piece of art? Why is that structure the way it is? Why is that abstract painting two colors? And what is it? <laughs> um, every artist has a reason and it's not our job to say, that's not good art. <laughs> um, everyone, as you know, they produce their art form and they go through the arts for a specific reason, whether it's intrinsic, extrinsic, and we just have to appreciate it that we have the ability to be so expressive um, because some people don't have the opportunity to do what we do. So be, be appreciative of the time that you have now, um, but specifically in the United States, the, the freedom that you have to express yourself using this instrument or this medium. Yeah, the UK Women's Choir does a song too with all the alumni at every single concert. That made me think about that because I'm still mm. in the process of like getting attached to it, but I'm definitely a crier. So I know I'm going to cry when that last concert before I go to student teach. But I guess now we'll overview the ambassador program for everybody here. For sure. Yeah. So the ambassador program is, so 90% of what I do is recruitment. And within that 90%, probably 10, 15%, I get to hang out with Anna and about two other, two other, two dozen other students um, who pretty much work alongside me to hang out with prospective students. Um, this year, it's a little different than I imagined. Uh, it's just, it's more of following up with students and just answering some questions and uh, just like the video I shared you just sharing their day in the life. Um, sometimes I can't answer a question. And so I'll hand it off to this student saying, um, sometimes I get asked, what is your favorite class now? I'm like, 
I don't know what the classes are. They change every semester. <laughs> and I can tell you what the classes were that I took, but the curriculum changes year after year, as you all know. There's the pre-2017 Artman track. There's the 2019 Artman track. So it's just um, a lot of questions that should be answered by current students um, because you are going to, they are going to be in your shoes the next year. And I can give them the facts. I can say we have 200 students in the LLP. You get to live in a tempur hotel pretty much and have all these gorgeous facilities and you have a dance studio um, and you have all these cool educational programs and art talks and um, this new student center. Yeah, I can show them all this, but really um, something that we're realizing my team, our team, Emily and I, and all the student affairs is the on-campus experience is what shapes a college career now. It's not just you get an A in the class and you get to learn music history really well. That's really not what, that's not what attracts students anymore. And so uh, the ambassador program is giving prospective students the inside look at what to expect. Um, you get to be pretty much my point of contact if a student wants to shadow someone. Um, I'll say, hey, Anna, I have a cello student. Can you hang out with them? Um, take them to the lesson. Um, Right now they're writing thank you notes to donors in the philanthropy department. So I work really close with alumni affairs. And um, so the director of philanthropy who fundraises and brings in money or scholarships for students like you. Um, sometimes there's big donors, sometimes there's small donors, but Lisa Blackadar um, requ not requires, requests uh, just student letters saying, hey, I'm Nate, I'm a senior thank you so much for donating to the school of music um, because of you i had an internship in prague and my flights got covered thank you um, because donors just really want to see where their money's going and so um, if i ever need real student examples <laughs> um, the ambassador team is really my go-to squad for that um, next year when COVID's not a thing we will travel <laughs> um, so typically throughout the semester the university in general goes to about a dozen cities in Atlanta, Cincinnati, St. Louis. And when you go to a college fair, when you walk into a big room filled with tables and booths, um, that's really the big role that the ambassadors get to do. Um, I get to let them go and do their thing and represent the college and the university. And um, it's usually overnight. So they get to travel with the other recruiters and other ambassadors and School music auditions, get to hang out with prospective students. Then uh, the School of Art and Visual Studies has a big open house, did. Um, anytime faculty members need student help, uh, the ambassadors are really just, are on the ground, in the field recruiters. Um, there's only so much I can do and say, uh, I can go down a list and say, this is what's great about this program. This is what's great about this. But here, talk to Zach about the music education program. This is why he loves percussion. Uh, so it's just really cool to have real examples rather than just saying, come to UK, we have digital media. It's just, I get to help me. Um, you also get free swag. That's also a perk, yeah. Um, sweatshirts, polos. Water bottles, notebooks, all that fun stuff. Um, we got a lot just, of ice cream. <laughs> and a lot, of, oh my goodness. Um, and a lot of ice cream, yeah. Um, you're really just a formal advocate for the college. That's really all it is. Um, you're a unpaid recruiter. <laughs> uh, you get to help me. Because honestly, I don't know if you all know, but most colleges have two or three recruiters. And um, granted, they're bigger than college fine arts. But really, it's just me being connected to the first year, second year experience, um, seeing why you all chose UK and um, have other things in my tool book when it comes to persuading students to come to fine arts and stories to tell. That's the ambassador program. There's technically an application process, uh, which I should have by now, I think. 
But if you're interested, you know where my office is, shoot me an email, come knock on my door and we'll get you connected. There's a interview process and that's really just for me to get to know you, you get to know me, um, usually around the same time as the peer mentor program. And yes, you can do both. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in being in the LLP next year and be a recruit, um, ambassador, it's definitely doable. And also encouraged. <laughs> yes. And uh, because we love to have those peer mentor experiences uh, with the ambassador program as well. So then you can talk more about the LLP. That's what I need. I need the recruitment of the LLP. So Nathan and his team are wonderful <laughs> at recruiting that part. I was in the LLP and a peer mentor back in the day when it was 45, 50 people, maybe. There's actually this building. video. I'll try to find it. I'll send it to Emily. She can share it with you all. When it was in Roselle, it was in Roselle when I was in it. So I was in the LLP 2012 to 14. Holy moly. Um, we were seeing my old Kentucky home and uh, my roommate at the time was conducting and we were doing the whole marching band, arms around each other. Um, we weren't socially distant whatsoever. <laughs> um, and so I'll try to find that because that popped up on my memories on Facebook the other day. So I'll try to find that and send it to Emily as a, a flashback to the one of the original LLP moments. I will share it on our Instagram page. Oh, geez. <laughs> I also had um, my hair was up here instead of down here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Yes, please send that to me. That's yeah, I'll find it. Get off here. I will also tag you in it. Oh, You're welcome. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thank you, Nathan, so much for joining us and for telling us about all of your experiences. And uh, what's really great about Nathan is that we met in the Arts Administration Master's Program. So when I saw his name come through for the position for his CFA, I was just like, oh my gosh, I know this person. So networking again, it was, um, it's a, it's a great tool to have. I promise you, you have no idea mm -hmm. you need to meet people and you, you'll never know where you end up. So it just uh, takes one connection, mm -hmm. honestly, to change, change your life. It just takes one moment, one connection one opportunity yep yep i think i just quoted I, an eminem song <laughs> what? i think i just quoted an eminem song i think he has a lyric i mean that's cool <laughs> i'm okay with that <laughs> all right well if there are no more questions we can go ahead and finish caitlin says thank you so much great talk oh, welcome yes yeah, come knock on my door but Maybe not the next few days, I guess. Stay in your dorm, stay warm. <laughs> yes, you all be careful with this ice storm that we'll see if it happens or not. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, you all have a great evening. Thanks for coming.